Hello and welcome to this quick tip. This is a quick tip talking about something that we've already covered in a couple of other places in the channel, but I'm getting an awful lot of requests from newer builders who are getting caught out. And the problem is that they're plugging in their flight controller into the computer using a USB cable and can do everything. It powers up, the lights come on, they can configure things, flash firmware. They can even get things like the motors and speed controllers running as part of the test. But once they unplug the USB cable and plug the main flight battery in, the flight controller isn't coming on at all. And this is because that the majority of speed controllers that we're getting these days for multi-rotors are actually opto speed controllers that don't supply the 5 volts that the system needs to power up and work. So if you have found this video and you're building and you're not sure what's going on, there are a couple of other places on the channel that's worthwhile taking a look at. The first is the Introduction to Remote Control series. That has a lot of the very basic information in series that you can watch to learn about the very basic 101 pieces for radio control. And the other series that are very handy if you're building or thinking of building a multi-rotor is the Quadcopter Building for Beginners series. Now we have three or four of those on the channel and they're worth a look because they are designed for beginners and I go through each of the individual steps piece by piece, not only showing the steps but also talking about why you do that. And in those two places, we absolutely talk about this problem, but it's worthwhile me making this little video specifically about it because so many subscribers and viewers have been asking about how to get out this problem. So let me very quickly explain what's going on and how you can fix it. So when multi-rotors first started to catch on big time, the speed controllers that we were all using had an inbuilt battery eliminator circuit. Now the inbuilt battery eliminator circuit actually supplies the five volts back into the flight controller, so the flight controller is powered and it works. And that five volts to power the flight controller is actually coming through the USB cable, which is why when you plug a USB cable in from your computer into your flight controller, it all powers up and it works because not only is the USB cable allowing you to talk to the flight controller, it's also providing that five volt power too. And if you have a speed controller that has an inbuilt battery eliminator circuit, then all you have to do is plug that three wire cable from the ESC into the motor connection on the flight controller and that then connects not only the signal wire to the speed controller so you can control the speed and power of the motor but it also supplies the 5 volts back to the flight controller and the way it works is that the all of the 5 volt pins on the flight controller and all the ground pins on the flight controller are all connected together so once part of it is powered by 5 volts everything else is 2 so that means that this 5 volts coming in from the inbuilt battery eliminator circuit is also fed out and powers your radio receiver and anything else that you've got plugged into the flight controller as well. Now an Opto speed controller is an ESC that doesn't have that inbuilt battery eliminator circuit. And there's a couple of reasons why that's done. One of the main ones is that the battery eliminator circuit actually produces quite a lot of heat and you don't want even more heat going into the ESC, the ESC is working hard enough. So in that instance, you still plug your ESC into the motor output on the flight controller as normal, but you have a separate battery eliminator circuit that you plug into any other spare plus five volt and ground pin, because as we've already talked about, all those are connected on the flight controller together, so everything's powered via that additional connection. Now the way to spot whether or not this is what's going on with your model is if you look in your speed controllers, your ESCs that are connected to the motors only have two wires and typically they're white and black, then you have an opto speed controller and you need to add a separate battery eliminator circuit. Now the good news is most power distribution boards these days and the power distribution board is typically the part of the model where it's connected to the battery and that's also where the power connections from the ESC is connected to as well. Most of those power distribution boards will have a little five volt regulator on there that you can use to power the flight controller. Or as we've done in a couple of series recently, you can get very small thumbnail size battery eliminator circuits that'll supply about one to one and a half amps at five volts. That's more than enough to power the flight controller as well. And all you need to do is 
connect the power side of the little battery eliminator circuit to a spare positive and negative battery terminal on your power distribution board. And then just as we talked about in this diagram, you connect five volt output from the battery eliminator circuit onto any spare five volt and ground pin on the flight controller. And that then means that the flight controller gets five volts, everything plugged into it gets five volts and it's going to work. So that's the answer. If you are building a multi-rotor and the flight controller powers up and works beautifully if you're connecting via USB, but if it doesn't power up if you connect it with a flight battery, this is probably what's going on. Have a look on your power distribution board, see whether or not there's a five volt output. If there is, connect that onto your flight controller. If it doesn't have one, then just get yourself one of the little battery eliminator circuits, wire that in and get it all working that way. Again, all of this is covered in far more detail in the quadcopter building for beginners series. So I'd recommend you go and have a look at that one because we go through each of these steps and actually show all of the pieces too. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.